please just let's give a mega hand to Marianne Vikkola. Mute pois vaan, painat siitä kerran. Aha, uh -huh. yes, excellent. Um, yeah, so hey everyone, I'm Marianne, uh, CEO for Slush and for the next some time. Uh, I'll be roughly going through two things. Uh, first is the short history of me, so how I ended up being where I am today. And the second part, uh, hopefully the more kind of insightful part, is the part of uh, me kind of reflecting that what, what have I done the past seven years while being here at Aalto, and what, what would I do differently, what would I emphasize more, uh, and, and what you could maybe do differently, or what I would do if I was in your position now. But, so, as Iro mentioned, I'm the CEO for Slush. Uh, how many of you have been to the event? Okay, but there's quite a many who haven't, so just very shortly. Uh, it's an event that was put up or established 10 years ago when a group of entrepreneurs realized that there's not really a grassroots community for the entrepreneurs over here in the Helsinki region. And the first Slush 10 years ago gathered roughly 300 entrepreneurs together. Um, and 2011, so six years ago, the student organization, all the ES, took over organizing Slush. And that's also when the goals and how, like, what the aim was, was a bit large, bigger than just bringing the entrepreneurs together, but also to actually make this region, the Nordics, and the entire Northern Europe, uh, a hub for entrepreneurship, venture capital. And we knew that we need to make something different that would draw people who wouldn't, uh, wouldn't otherwise visit even the entire continent of Europe. And that's why we've been growing and making it something, something that there hasn't been here before. And uh, I myself joined 2012, first time, and you'll hear about that more. Uh, I've also been, still am, a student here at Aalto uh, at the industrial engineering uh, major. and. Uh, I've been doing quite a bunch of things along the way, although I'm a very miserable student since I haven't completed a single course since the past three years. Uh, but here I am, seventh year starting. And uh, I'm also, my background is in gymnastics, so I've never really been a kind of full-time student. I first was in the like uh, national team for gymnastics and then I started doing slush and I was doing my studies in the meanwhile. But uh, going to the story that pretty much starts in 2011 uh, when I graduated from high school. So I'm here, originally here from Helsinki here in Finland. I've never actually lived probably ab abroad. That's not part of the presentation, but if you have the chance, please go do it. It's super useful. And uh, I graduated from the high school of Haukilahti, which nowadays is actually at the, at the campus over here in Otaniemi. And uh, I never really, had a passion for like anything big or anything like, you know, I didn't know that I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to study law from the very, very first day on. Uh, I actually was pretty much inclining towards the business studies most of my high school, high school time. And uh, my both of my parents are economists or graduates from the, the former Helsinki School of Business. And uh, I have been raised also <laughs> with that mentality. So we had like vappusitsit parties throughout my life and all that. But then I somehow, or for some reason, I still can't reflect back why. Uh, I did study mathematics and physics uh, in high school, and then I just kind of realized that why, why waste this? And um, somewhere, somehow, I found this marvelous uh, thing you can study at all called industrial engineering. And I applied and got in right after high school. And that's the place where I first actually felt that I found people who were like me, or I felt that there's a group of people that think like me, do things like me, and this like, you know, there are people who I get energy from and who drive me forward. So that was a really, really like exhilarating first couple of years at all, getting to know these people over here. Um, more on the picture later, but it was also a group of people that wanted to do things. So it was not just, you know, le lectures and meetings, but it was like a lot of parties, a lot of extracurricular stuff that we started doing around. And I really, really fell in love with the entire mentality that I felt around me here at Aalto. And so I applied uh, in 20, 
12 for the board. Um, the picture is around Vappu from uh, a Vishu drinking competition that we just had won. Um, and I, I applied to become the person who runs corporate relations. Didn't get, get there, uh, luckily, because had I won that election, would I not be here? Um, luckily, the guild was so wise that they didn't select me uh, for that position, but I ended up becoming the treasurer. So managing the funding and the money for the students, the student association. Uh, that money or the budget every year was roughly like 50,000 euros or so. And uh, that's where I got my like initial Initial knowledge on like finance, how you run run a kind of an organization, a funding for an organization, that ended up being one of the other factors that's crucial for me being here. Um, when I started my studies, uh, there really wasn't like what what's happening to here today. <laughs> why you're sitting here? It wasn't here, 2011. Um, the companies, the organizations I saw as a freshman around here were a lot of management consulting, bigger corporations. We visited everything from Nokia to Vaisala uh, to big factories uh, and paper mills. And uh, that's also how I actually ended up going for a short period of time to management consulting at Boston Consulting Group uh, three years ago. And uh, actually, I can also very, very war warmly recommend that 10-week experience. Um, I learned a lot, at least, on how to manage people who are busier than you, who are higher than you in the organization. You learn to make beautiful slides. Um, but that maybe still wasn't for me for like the rest of my life. Where I actually feel that I've gotten most of my education throughout my life has been through gymnastics. So uh, I don't even remember the day when I started sports, but uh, I've been basically doing that all my life. And I quit 2013 when we won the World Championship Silver, when we had World Championships here in Finland. Uh, and for the past years, or the last years of, of being part of the national team, I basically trained like 20 to 30 hours a week. And then in the meanwhile, the trainings came to here at Aalto and studied a little bit. And what I really feel that I got out of that experience um, is many of the things I need in like my everyday life. I use them every day. Starting from the fact that you know, you've know you been competing in a ice hall full of people, like thousands of people, and just like you know going in front of an audience is not that big of a deal. Uh, you get the mindset of quickly go getting over failures or getting over disappointments, because that's the only way as an athlete you can actually develop yourself, because you're not going to win every time you do something. Um, there was, for example, this situation where two minutes before, in the actually a year before that in the World Championships, one of our, actually our best girl basically, it was injured so bad that she couldn't compete. And that happened two minutes before we were supposed to go to the carpet. And uh, there was, well, what happened there was pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting. But overall, like basically you've trained a full year, 20 hours a week for that one competition. And then two minutes before of the, like, show time, everything goes bunk. So you just learn these skills that I need today every, like everywhere. So if there's any people who've done sports uh, along the way of coming here, uh, good for you. Try to utilize the skills that you actually learned there, even though you probably don't even realize what you learned along the way. But then how this kind of everything <laughs> comes together is that this picture is actually taken here uh, pretty much four years ago. Uh, Risto in the picture is, is from our, uh, or is also a major, industrial, major in industrial engineering and uh, he was already involved in all the ES and we did a lot of things together. Uh, we for example were tutors for like the freshmen when we were second year students and um, because of him I'm here. So he asked me to help out at Slush 2012, and my first task, or first asked the <laughs> task that he asked me to do was to spread posters of Slush around the campus, so that I did. And I ended up through that 
being part of the slush event help team, also known as the firefighter team. So basically the team that goes wherever it's needed, wherever we have not, not enough volunteers or like resources to do things. And uh, what I then ended up doing was that <laughs> someone had this great idea that when you have an event of 3,000 people, uh, and you've probably seen the photos, we have these badges uh, where you have your name and a company where you're from, so that we print them beforehand, so that we have 3,000 name tags printed, and then pe when people come, we can just you know give them. Um, so it was the night before Slush 2012, and um, we realized that when they come from the print house that they're not in the alphabetical order. They're just in a mixed order. Uh, and what, how we spent the night before slush is that we tried to arrange these 3,000 badges into alphabetical order. We got to the point where we had all of the last names in alphabetical order, but you can imagine in Finland, it's, it's pretty like last names starting with K, you have everything from Karhunen to Karjala to whatever. So you had like 300 Ks mixed up and 3,000 people coming there at the same time. So that was a goddamn mess. But I fell in love with the like attitude of doing things. And after that, I stayed in the community, uh, ended up being part of organizing Summer of Startups, the program that's today known as the Kiwas Accelerator with Risto2. And um, after that, me being the treasurer for the study guild, as well as that had the budget of roughly 50k, right? And then running the summer program and being volunteer at Slush once, uh, I ended up becoming the CFO, so running the finances for Slush 2013. Uh, that ended up being, mm, what's that, like 20 times bigger uh, in terms of finances than what I had done before. And my first task that I did was that the company behind Slush was just established like a month before I joined the team. And um, the first thing was that, you know, Marianne, here you go, please put up our accounting system. <laughs> like, you know, I've never done an accounting system, right? Uh, and sadly, our CFO still kind of uh, <laughs> feels bad about some of the things I did four years ago. But anyways, I pu put it up um, and even though I had no idea in the beginning what I was doing, I figured it out. And that's kind of the mentality that's been here along the way and still is that this community here is not looking for the people who know it all. They're looking for the people who have the attitude to learn, right? And um, so I ran finances for a couple of years. Um, then 2015, I switched to partnerships, so basically, selling the sponsorship packages for Slush, and then now it's been two years that I've been running the conference. So that's kind of, in short, how, how I ended up being where I am today. And uh, then to the part of what, do, what would I do then differently? Uh, from the perspe perspective of a person who is today associated in Alta University, because I realized that, yeah, I'm probably not gonna officially attend as a student, anymore. I've attended for two years and haven't studied, uh, studied at all, so I left that one year that I have left to a piggy bank that I can study if, if, if I'll one day return. Um, so what, what would I do differently? I gathered, gathered three, six or six uh, lessons from along the way. So the first one of them is that you like really spend your time on finding other things than just studying. Uh, the fact that you're already here, for a lot of you, this is not anyhow related to you know getting credits. So it's an indication that you you know you kind of already got that. So for me, in the beginning, it was gymnastics. Then it was a lot, being a lot like a lot active in the in the guild of industrial engineering. Then at slush, and I have to say that I wouldn't be here had I just focused on studying and getting the credits. Um, nor do I, if I now reflect back, like what are the best times or best memories of my study time? They are not sitting in the lectures or nor are they like, you know, going through the coursework, mostly at least. Many of the best memories are through the people that I've met, through the people and the parties, whatever was built around. And actually, if, if I think about it, like what's the most that Aldo has given to me? It's the people that I've met here. 
it's not so much, you know, what did I learn when I sat listening to, or, you know, doing math. That's at least what I feel. Second, uh, kind of related, and now when reflecting back, I, I'm really sad that I didn't do too much about it. But the fact is that you guys sitting there, we all are the people who will build tomorrow. And uh, every entrepreneur, every bigger company, research unit, you name it, needs people there. And usually the more diverse, the better. Um, as an entrepreneur, you need talent around you. You can just need to realize the fact that you can't do it alone. And usually you're better off with a team that has a multiple, like a diverse skills. Not just, you know, everybody being a business student or everybody being an engineer. And now when I'm, for example, uh, looking for new members to slush team, I just wish that I had spent my time more and more getting to know people, not just who study industrial engineering, but around the university and even other universities, everything from material scientists to engineers of software to arts people and designers, um, because that's, those are the people I need also around me. And uh, now is the best time here at school to make those connections. It's so easy to just go and meet new people when they're around you. It's not gonna get any, 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 any easier. Uh, in the future. So now that you have the time, please go ahead, go to a weird party with people you've never met before and just, you know, go ahead, make the new, new connections because you'll need them in the future. It's never going to be easier than it's today. Um, had someone <laughs> told me when I was a freshman student that you should go to a course on storytelling, I would probably have left and not gone. But I would say that that's something that you, especially if you, you are aiming or you wish to become an entrepreneur, you need every day. Um, and if you think about like the world overall, take an example, like the Bible, for example. It's after all just a book of stories written by a couple of people. And still, it's just a book, it's just a story. There's millions or actually billions of people around this globe who base their lives, how they live their lives on that one story. And the power, it, it's just crazy what you can achieve with a good story. Facts are great, numbers are great, uh, Excel sheets are great, uh, I love them, I'm an engineer, but you just get so much further with a good story. So both the story and the fact that nobody knows public speaking from the day one. The only way to get comfortable with it is to learn it. Go ahead, drop yourself into the cold water and start learning it. Um, now it's easier than later again. So find or make yourself go into places where you can actually try this out. Create stories, share them with others, go ahead and speak out. Uh, because it's going to get easier and easier by, by time. And you don't need the skill of public speaking or storytelling just as an entrepreneur, you know, when you go to pitch for an investment or, or when you have a sales meeting. That's something that you need every day to resolve a conflict, uh, in negotiations, in internal matters. You can go as to a certain point with the facts and the figures, but it's just so much easier to get people on your side with a good story. So, warmly recommended. There's a lot of opportunities today, at least, around Aldo, how you can actually start learning that skill. Um, how many of you have had the experience of reading a page in a book once, and then twice, uh, and then three times? Now, raise your hand. And then just thinking that, where the fuck will I need this in my life? <laughs> Yes, mo most of you. So this was how, like, since the very first year at Aldo, uh, we were thought about leadership, about management, strategic thinking, work psychology, uh, and the theories around these things. And that was exactly my thinking when reading these concepts of like tacit knowledge and implicit knowledge and knowledge cycles and how you, you know, put up in factories. Like, it was really hard for me to just like understand that where will I need this 
how where where do I what is this like knowledge cycle with like arrows like yes yeah there's knowledge in the world great um, but then now today uh, I try to seek leadership advice every day every single day be that from my team from my friends from the board online reading articles reading books I do it every day and now I just wish that when I studied I had these leadership experiences and I would have reflected that how does this that I'm now reading actually come to life because actually there's quite a lot of now that I look at the books there's actually got a lot of stuff that's true but it was just impossible for me to anyhow understand it because I didn't have any like real life practical experience of how that works uh, and especially in, in, in leadership that was that was the case so whenever you have a chance please go ahead uh, and try to find yourself in a situation where you can reflect on what you just studied and how that matters in real life and it doesn't need to be anything big um, a good example is that when I'm looking at people uh, for our team I tend to look at, at the, okay how has this person demonstrated leadership before it can't be as simple as you know have you applied to become a board member in your study association or in an extracurricular guild or have you been part of the is there a name for spexy in English I don't think so but anyway like have you demonstrated that you want to take responsibility and you want to be there where things happen um, and then do, do those things and go and reflect that is there, was, was there something that I could have done differently was there something that was thought that I could apply in real life or was it useless anyways like the skill of reflection and then also trying to find those places where you can actually experience what you study uh, so go ahead and do that um, it's great to have a degree oh, okay what who am I to tell because I don't have one or I have a bachelor's degree but what, I, what I'm trying to say is that the, the degree is kind of a, like a baseline but more and more people are looking for the experiences that you have on top of it or around it or even not having the diploma but what you've actually spent your time on so had I just focused on getting the A grades I would not be here I would not have volunteered at slush I would not have become a team member because I would have just focused on getting the A grades so I strongly encourage you guys to graduate but make sure that there's something that you've built around that and also another reflection point for me is that try to figure out like what you want to be good at because now is your time to actually gain the knowledge for me for example what's my pain here is that I studied industrial engineering for three years which is a lot of math a lot of physics a lot of engineering industrial engineering a lot of like leadership but I feel that I never really got into like one specific topic that I would know really well and now that I'm thinking okay what, what's ha gonna happen like in my life after slush I can have the feeling that like, do you actually know anything so try to figure out that one thing be that engineering be that computer science data science be that marketing but just you know kind of decide what where you want to be good at and then build around there a lot of experience how you kind of demonstrate that so the diploma is great but build something on top of that and then lastly um, and most difficultly this is a thing that's very 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 hard to teach or learn uh, but it's a thing that would take half of my problems as a team leader away uh, is empathy and helping others so very rarely in life I see a situation where by not helping others and just focusing your own thing you would actually take yourself further than in a situation where you ditch your ego away for a while help others and let that just you know kind of the rain come back to you so this is really hard to learn but just you know try to stop every once in a while and just think about like how does this other person feel about the situation especially if you find yourself in this the kind of leadership context um, and go like go and find that those experiences so stop for a while think about it like how how does this other person feel how could I help the other people around me uh, to become better um, and 
just ditch your like ego away for a while. Because uh, as said, I feel that half of my problem problems as a team leader would go away had I just a magic wand that would just you know bling, make everybody more empathetic. Um, but so in in short, those six six lessons from my side were that f firstly. Uh, do things around your studies. Study, but make sure that there's something around it. Secondly, you're now studying with the people who built the future, so take most out of it and learn. Just look around and make new connections. Now is the easiest time to do it in your life. Then, uh, thirdly, I forget yeah, the storytelling part. Just go ahead, try public speaking, creating stories. That's easier now than ever. Uh, then there, there's the part of, I should have a, <laughs> should think if I have a funny story about it, but, uh, just seek experiences of how to, how to reflect, how, how to, how to put that, what you learn into real life. Then not focusing on the diploma or the diploma is great, but what's around it. And then lastly, helping others because that will come back sooner or later that will come back to you. Thanks. Okay. I was pretty close to 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was the long intro. Sorry about that. Uh, hey, now some questions. And actually, I want to make, make sure that everybody knows that we have a storytelling course run by Bruce Ulrich. So, so I'm going to take that because apparently I need it really badly. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, I'll, I'll just one uh, quick question. Uh, you talk about the empathy, but I almost feel sometimes it's a disadvantage. So, like, um, kind, of, kind of too, too, if people are too kind, because it's a really hard word out there. So, how do you make sure that you're empathetic, but not too kind? Do you know what I mean? If I'm too kind, I'm just going to give everything away and, you know, everybody's going to use me, me and stuff me, like that. Empathy and kindness are not like kind of not not the same package so you can still kind of try to put yourself in the other person's position and what i mean by like where that takes you is that you can that also kind of links to the storytelling part so once you have the skill of empathy and going to the other person's position it's easier for you to also reason things when you look at the things from that other person's pr perspective that's at least how i see it so uh for me, it's it's like I, I've never really experienced the part of like being empathetic, but be, then being too kind. Or for me, it's been more about like you know you can actually get just get a lot faster, get things done a lot faster when you have empathy. Right. Maybe I'm just too like cruel or evil <laughs> as a person. So. And I'm too kind. <laughs> can you read this? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, hi, I'm Johanna. I'm actually working for AVP too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just curious uh, if you're going to graduate as master's at some point. Do you think you're going to continue your studies? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sadly don't have even the master's, uh, what's that called, hops, like the plan. <laughs> they, they tried to make me do it, but then they... they realized that I won't do it, so I haven't, I haven't done it yet. Let's see. I haven't ditched that yet. So I also have a related question. My name is Dima. I just arrived here for the second year of my double degree program. I'm here. Um, and uh, it's the first time ever in my life when I feel I don't want to graduate from university as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> So my yeah, my question is, uh, what should I do? Like, if I want to stay here in Alto or as being associated to university, I understand I kind of need to still have some connection, and I don't want to go into postgraduate. No, I just want to hang out around here and be in this society. So should I just uh, fuck up my thesis and? <laughs> <laughs> no, you shouldn't. But you should join the Alto as open meeting that started at six over there. I'm doing that. Uh, good job. <laughs> you're, you're going there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try it. 
Hi, uh, hi. I am Akshendra, and I have like two questions for you. So you said uh, that gymnastics was the best education you had. So can you just elaborate on how it helped in your personal growth and become the person you are? Uh, secondly, are our CEOs like all the CEOs I have always met? They are always very crazy, very eccentric. So it's like, is it always there or? <laughs> so did I give an impression that I'm crazy too? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll first go to the question of gymnastics. So um, how that shaped me as a person. I already mentioned the two parts. First being like, you know, you get very used to uh, just being in front of an audience. So that's one. And the other one that I already mentioned was the like, getting quickly over failures, uh, getting, getting like your mind or also like closing your mind from, from disappointments so you don't just dwell around them uh, for long. So that's been definitely helpful. The other things, uh, one simply is that, like what's the word, word in English? English. But you, you just simply are very, dead, or when you decide to do something, you're easily very dedicated to do that. Because in sports, like if you want to be the best in the world in what you do, you need to be dedicated. So you kind of learn the attitude of dedication. Uh, that has definitely been very helpful. From gymnastics, I also feel, because it's a sport where you have a jury, right? So I feel that um, I learned to get feedback. Because of course the sport is all about people just kind of not complaining, but you know, giving you feedback every time that you know that's not good enough. Um, and also, you get the points. You tell how good you are. So it's it's been easier for me also to get feedback and reflect and especially adopt accordingly because that's what I've been doing all my life uh, before coming here. Um, so at least those things, and maybe also just the fact that I was the captain of our team for the past couple of years, so or like the last couple of years before quitting. So. You know, it's a group of 16 to 20 year old girls together. Uh, there's a couple of situations every now and then that needs to be figured out. Uh, so you learn by doing, right? Uh, and then the question of like personality, but maybe my actually first les lesson or my point of view of that is that there's not a thing that's like a born leader that just simply does not exist. Uh, you learn by doing. Some people have more characteristics towards this like stereotypical personality of being like outgoing, driven, and just pushing forward. But like, I guarantee you guys, anybody can do it if you want to do it. So there's like simply, you learn by doing. You learn by reflecting and asking for advice from others. But for sure, there's not like uh, you don't need to have a certain type of personality to to end up running your own business. Hi, thank you, Marianne. And first of all, I like your dress. Tell me thank where you. I can get one. It's, it's, it's Gap, actually, so okay. just walk to the store. <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is Tamara, and I work as an assistant professor in the University of Vasa. So I actually teach students, and it is really funny to hear uh, about your opinion that the experience from lectures is not the most uh, inspiring that will stay with students. But my question relates to uh, you as a person who has a lot of network and you do a lot of networking, which involves a lot of emotional energy. Have you ever experienced the feeling that I have too broad network that I cannot re actually handle anymore? and how you deal with that? Um, luckily, there's internet and there's LinkedIn, so <laughs> it's somewhere saved every time. Um, I don't, I, uh, that's not something I, I really, uh, you know, I would feel that, you know, I know too many people. Uh, I probably don't. Uh, but what I do, like, kind of a bit linked to that, um, there's these people who are very, 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 like, naturally born, like, networkers who just simply love the situation that you have like a hundred people you don't know around you just go and you know meet everybody I'm not really that type of person I just you know it, it's like very mentally constraining for me to do that uh, I like rather be hanging around with my friends who I already know um, but so what, what's been my trick there though to like make the connections happen uh, that I feel like they should have is that simply that I've just taken the position of trying to be 
uh, trying to be like I'm not I've never gone you know like really hard pitching what I do just you know go and talk about casual stuff and have fun and later on then maybe somehow try to get something out of the connection that I've made and especially if you're not in a too talkative mode a really really simple tool that I've created for myself has been just asking questions because people really love usually talking about themselves so just have like in your pocket always 10 questions that you can ask anybody you meet and uh, that gets you going Hi. Uh, so, how can you maintain the uh, the relationship with people you met? That was my next question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, of uh, oh, you can you, yeah. So you face need to face the facts that it's in you know impossible to keep on everything. But what I fi also find out uh, very much just simply in life is that you just ask. You know, people are not or people are very, very helpful in general, usually. So it, just, you know, ask for help or ask for whatever you have for them to ask from, uh, even if it's it's a connection that you haven't talked to for a couple of years. Uh, just as an example, uh, Phil Brady was here summer 2013 when I joined the community. Uh, a US, US grad student from Stanford was working here through the Startup Lifers program. And I hadn't talked to him ever since. But now I just saw online that he had put up a venture fund of his own and he was on the Forbes 30 under 30 list and um, he's based in San Francisco and we we're going to bring the flight to slush again from San Francisco full of people. So I just felt that, you know, he has to link to Finland. I met him three or four years ago. I'll just, you know, send him a message and reply in a day. So it's for me, it's just been just about like, you know, going beyond the like, does he remember who I am? You're just asking for help. Thank you. <laughs> Can you catch? I'm Daniel, and my question relates to, you mentioned that you were working as the event help in Slush when you started off, and actually I'm doing that this year as well as, a, as a group leader. And my question relates to, is there any thing you wish I don't were you a group leader or team leader or were you like a well volunteer? back then I was the only person in <laughs> event help so. okay because my question relates to is there any tips or feedback that you wish or you noticed that a leader uh, for the event help or other team did well or you wish it would have done better uh, even though it's like slush and volunteer work, I, I think the situations are, situations are pretty much the same in, in any kind of a team. And especially in the slush context, I feel that what's simply very important is just, you know, give the team space and space to take responsibility. Um, they are there to learn and they want to be part of it. Uh, so just, you know, trust in people. I think that's usually the, the best advice to give that let's let, the, let them do things where they're part of the team. and. And you're and just there to help them out doing whatever they are there to do. Any other questions there? Um, I would like to ask about um, um, about the leadership as a young leader. What you are bringing to the existing company, like Slush? Uh, well, or what you are trying to change? Yeah, well, as a CEO. The th the th uh, for me, the situation slush is pretty different. Even though I'm, maybe I can say I'm fairly young, uh, I'm still the kind of the longest staying member in the slush team. So I'm actually the oldie, like the veteran who should go out soon, person there. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not there actually. The young driving force in a way. I'm the oldie who's like you know the cranky one. Oh, maybe not. But, <laughs> but anyway, so that my my context there isn't really like you know I'm the young changing driver who joined the team to make everything different, but I, I've, I'm, the, I'm the person there who has one of the longest histories. But to maybe actually then where I can kind of put that into context is that whenever through slush, which is quite often, uh, I get into situations where there's like a lot more ex experienced or seasoned businessmen or women, or um, for example in a partnership negotiation with a bigger corporation and most of the people in there are like 50 year olds and so forth. And um, my, my tactics there, how I'll be working there, one, again, going to the, the networking trick is that, you know, just have a bunch of good questions and ask questions 
um, humility. So even though uh, slush is a big event, and blah blah blah, uh, just going there with a like really humble attitude and asking like, what, what, how can he help you? So that that's usually uh, worked out pretty well in those contexts. Contexts, and uh, maybe thirdly, what I also mentioned about the like networking part of things is that. People also are very willing to help usually. So just go ahead and send an email or ask for help from one of the more seasoned senior people. They tend to want to help and if they don't answer, it doesn't usually even mean that they're, they don't care, just they just don't have the time. So not, don't be afraid of the situations. Okay, let's do, take two last questions. Okay. Uh, hi, Marianne. My name is Verena, and first, thanks a lot for your presentation. And it's less of a question, but really saying thanks a lot for stressing, especially the last point, help others. If I may just share from my own experience, um, many, many years ago when I started in a large corporation, I was once in a time management training and someone told me, they are not paying you for helping others, uh, which I think turned around by first having a job where I started in support. So it was my job. They paid me for helping others. And many, many years later, I would say it's one of the most important thing to reach out to others, to help others. And if they need it, to just offer it. So thanks a lot for stressing it. I think it's really important to learn that. Thanks. <laughs> okay, two, two more questions, because that was a compliment, but it's a good compliment. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Henrik, and this is actually my second week in Alta, so I'm trying to suck in all the wisdom that uh, you have to give. And uh, my question would be that what's like the pros and cons with working with like really young people in a company like Slush? Definitely more, more pros than cons. Um, people tend to be like, first, I, I'd say that I, I always, also in the future, will, if I have a choice of having a, someone who's not really even goes so much to the age, but you know, more driven and go, not experienced, I'd always go for to choosing that person than more experienced but less like passionate about it so definitely the, the pros are mostly around you know having the the excitement and the really really true hunger to learn and hunger to chase new things um of course you get you get into kind of where the the cons are um something that i see is kind of related to the empathy part of things that you just when you just haven't been through that many situations in your life um it's harder for you to also like think of from other perspectives and you know a coin always has two sides uh, and that's something that I often face with younger younger team members is that you know when they're very very passionate and driven and they sometimes only see that one you know this one track this one reality uh, and not the other side of the coin and then solving conflicts around that kind of goes with the empathy part of things too but that might be the like biggest con that I see daily. So basically, everything that we've been gone or we've gone through today kind of helps you in that too. So just you know, putting yourself in so many situations as possible, not just staying home and watching Netflix, uh, should help that out. Okay, do we have a final question here? You got something, because you're the only one. So <laughs> really, maybe really someone wants to. Give a question. No. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to. There is a thing related to um, having enough mental energy to maintain the network and being active. That's something that relates to me very much. And to add up on your answer, um, first about uh, maintaining the relationship, uh, you don't really necessarily like even for you it's easier because you are CEO of a 
cool company and stuff. And for that, that reason, you can write to a person you didn't talk to for four years and he will still answer. Uh, I am still far away from that point in my life to be that like serious person, but still it works even for me. Uh, if you suggest people to do amazing things and if you haven't, like they, they haven't heard from you for the last three years, if you still suggest something right and to the right person in the right moment, you will be heard and it's absolutely fine. You don't need to uh, know uh, about the birthday of the grandmother of a person that you do serious business with. It's not, yeah, so this is absolutely normal. Feel free to do that. And uh, it's the same with the mental energy, with the energy to network. At some point, you can feel burnout. You can feel that there are too many people in your life. And it's absolutely normal to start cutting something that is really not beneficial or not working. If you're feeling that's too much, it's absolutely normal to stop. And no one will really blame you. Uh, yeah. So that, that's the thing. <laughs> Question. <laughs> I'll maybe actually just quickly before going yeah. to, to Mark's question, uh, comment on one thing that I didn't realize to mention, uh, but I, what I like could have said around the, like keeping the connections going on and kind of get to your comment also on that, you know, uh, even though it would not be that known as a person, people answer. But what I do actively do around the network is that I'm not reaching out to everybody with the same message, of course. So whenever you, even though there's been a like long, time not connecting with somebody, uh, always try to find out, okay, what has that person been doing lately? What is he or she interested in? How can I like, and finding those little hints of like, what, where the connections could be today, even though there's been time in between. So that takes a little bit of time though, but usually pays off. Um, really simple one. In your time at Slush, what's your biggest fuck up? And what was the learning lesson you got from that? <laughs> It's probably actually the thing that I just kind of said about the, you know, too narrow-minded thinking. Because of course I also fall into that easily. Um, and so as a leader, um, there's always two sign sides of the coin to every situation. And my one of the, my first focus was around going narrow-minded too much to that only like kind of believing or basing my judgment on that one side of the coin, not you know, hearing enough on the other side of the coin, which ended up a person leaving of the team, which was not really nice. Uh, and my learning naturally was to always remember that there's two sides of the coin. Give a giant ride of applause.